Hello. So today we're going to start looking at electrical fields. And when we're starting as an introduction to electrical fields, we want to cover off what is charge. We want to have a look at what conventional current means. Uh, we want to also have a look at what electrical field strength means um, in terms of point charges. We also want to consider, you know, how do we calculate the strength and the forces involved with electrical uh, fields. And then I want to take you through an example which uh, puts, a, if you like, a charged particle in an electrical field. And then we have a look at how that particle behaves. All right. So let's start here with electrical fields. Now, in this area, I have a model of our atom. I'll just undo that. But this is what I'm looking at. And obviously, you may have learned already through chemistry, the atom is comprised of subatomic particles, and those larger subatomic particles comprised of electron, protons, and neutrons. And we know that the electrons and protons in particular carry charge. And what is charge? Well, charge is, a, if you like, a form of attraction that different particles will have with one another. And the strength of that uh, attraction is um, expressed through charge. And we would say that, you know, it's either negative charge or positive charge, depending on whether they're attracting or repelling one another. Okay, so one thing we know about when we're discussing electricity, the genesis of electricity is, e is actually in the word. So it's about the flow, in a practical sense, of electrons and we know that with electrons E okay they carry a negative charge okay and we naturally know that this negative charge so we'll call this QE is equal to 1.6 and we may put a negative inside there times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs now this C here This is what we call coulombs, and it's just a measure by which we express charge. But one thing that we want to know about electricity, even though electricity describes the flow of electrons, and it has to describe the flow of electrons, because the electrons are the free-moving subatomical particles that move between the atoms. But when we deal with electricity, commonly what we want to focus on is positive charge. And this idea of understanding positive charge, and I'll just make this note too, normally when we express positive charge or we're dealing with circuits, okay, positive charge, we use the color red to express it. The positive charge is really important when we're dealing with any equation to do with electrical fields or electrical current. And it's this principle around what we call conventional current. We, because electrons deal with negative charge, we want to avoid dealing with negative charge, so we, we choose then to deal with positive charge. So what I want to focus on is this principle. So if you could imagine that this is some wire here, and the wire is composed of metal uh, atoms, okay? So it could be a copper wire composed of a lot of copper atoms and within those copper atoms okay we have electrons that are freely bound so they can move between atoms um, if we induce a current um, but they, they are free to move about within the metal and we call that good conduction so it's a conductor of electricity so what i want to do with the, my copper wire is I want to introduce an electron and I want to send that electron into the copper wire. Now what that electron is going to do effectively is because there's repulsion, when it interacts with this electron, it carries enough energy to expel it. And then that electron therefore carries enough energy to expel that one and so forth. And we go down the chain, okay, with electrons all throw, throwing one another out and what we get is we get a 
flow of electrons moving through the wire. Okay? And that flow of electrons would be in that direction. But remember, these electrons are carrying a negative charge. Therefore, what we want to do with conventional current is we want to express which way the positive charge is happening. Now, think about if I think about this one atom here, as soon as it loses this electron, okay, in a moment it loses an electron, it becomes a net positive charge because, you know, the protons, the number of protons are outnumbering the number of electrons. And if I express that as a flow of positive charge, that's the way the positive charge is being directed. And this is what we call our current or our conventional current. Now, this is really important when we consider batteries um, and also electrical circuits. So here we have an electrical circuit set up with a battery. Okay, what we might do is we might close this switch so that the circuit is working. Therefore, the light bulb will should come on and the um, flow of electricity will be going around, feeding back into the battery and then keep on feeding the light bulb. Now, our electrons, or well, one thing about the terminals that we have to understand, that's our positive terminal, that's our negative terminal. Positive terminal normally has either a bolder and longer um, line to express it. And our electrons would be repelled out of the negative terminal and along the wire. So our electrons would be heading in that direction, okay? So they would be heading in, if you like, an anti-clockwise direction. But our conventional current is based on what, which way is the positive charge flowing. We always work with positive charge. And our conventional current would be going against the flow of electrons, which would mean that it would be going in a clockwise direction, in this example, and that's what we call our conventional current, and it's focused on positive. You know, the way, which way, which direction is the positive charge is flowing. So here I have, over here, I have two terminals. So what I've effectively done is unraveled the wire in, in this circuit and just made it straight. And I've got a positive terminal here, positive, and a negative terminal here. Now, if I had a positive charged particle, which way would this particle act? Well, it's going to be repelled by the positive, and it's going to be attracted to the negative. So the flow of positive charge is going to go in that direction. If we expand this a little bit further, and let's say we have two plates, one carrying a positive charge, one carrying a negative charge, what we get is we get a field which is flowing out of positive into negative. And this is what we call our electrical field. So when we discuss point charges, let's consider if we put a positive charge, just a smaller positive charge somewhere here. Like we said, it's gonna be repelled by the positive charge and we can express what that field would look like. So that field is gonna look something like that. Remember, positive charge or positive point charge field goes outwards. If we had a positive charge, then a smaller positive charge, and we put it next to a point charge which is negative, what we're going to find is we're going to have that charge attracted towards the negative point charge. And what we get is we get electrical fields flowing into the negative point charge. Okay, so for negative point charge, the field goes inwards. 
and we can get very various um, uh, arrangements where for example we can have a positive charge and another positive charge and how are these going to interact well the field is moving out of these charges like so okay and we don't have a problem when we're sort of looking at either ends of these charges but these fields are going to interact across here and the way they're going to interact is they're going to move upwards and we get sort of field dispersion if you like or field interference likewise if i have a positive and negative charge okay obviously uh, flowing out of positive into negative but then these there will be some bending let's say that I started off originally but there, there will be some bending with this that will go like so maybe like that until it's slightly outwards and back to normal on the other side Okay, so you just have to be aware of the different arrangements that you might have when you're dealing with two-point charges. Now, the other thing that we need to consider is the strength of the charge. Okay, so or not the strength of the charge, forgive me, the strength of the electrical field. So if I had a positive point charge, obviously my field is going to start to get be strong when we're, when we're close to it, but then it's going to start to weaken and weaken as I get further away. And this is going to be replicated as I move out from the point source. So therefore, if for example, I put a positive charge here, okay, let's call that A, and I put a positive charge B here, we, we could ask the question, which particle, okay, both charged particles, is exposed to a stronger field. Well, the strength of the field at part A is going to be much greater than the strength of the field at part B because it's closer. And it runs according to the rule of F equals K Q, which will, Q is the charge of our point source, all on R squared. Now, this is not dissimilar to when we talk, spoke about gravity with F being proportional to the inverse of the radius squared. All right, so it's very similar. But there are some differences here. Q, we're talking about charge, okay? And K, K is given as Coulomb's constant, and K is equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. All right, so that's another value that you're going to have to recall, remember. And that, and that leads us into discovering, you know, what is electrical field strength? So we have that here. I might get rid of this one then because we've covered it. The other thing that we want to consider with, if it is operating with, on a basis of electrical field strength, F equals one on, oh sorry, I made a mistake here. This should be, uh, 
the field strength, let me bring it back up, is E. Okay. So E is proportional to 1 on R squared. Okay. Um, if I mapped it out on a graph and I said that was my radius, that is my field strength, what we would find is that our radius is affecting our field strength and effectively as the radius increases, our field strength decreases. So, what we want to do is we also want to think about what is the force acting between two point charges. Now, we have two examples here, or actually three examples. We can have positive and positive, we can have negative and negative, and we can have positive and negative as examples. And what they'll be do is they'll be set apart by a certain distance, which we call the radius, Okay, and they'll carry different charges. Q1, Q2, Q1, Q2, Q1, Q2. Now, these obviously are going to repel, attract, oh sorry, they will definitely not attract, they will repel, and these will attract one another and we can say what is the force is going to be now the forces will equal q by e and this q is generally taken by the particle okay so or if you like charge of the particle placed in the electrical field. Now if I expand it a little bit further, what I get is K, Q1, Q2, all on R squared. And just as a side note, if I think about Newton's universal law of gravity, there are a lot of similarities happening here. Okay, but for your purposes, what you need to do is be able to recall this equation and recall this equation. The other thing that, that you'll need to, that I want to look at, is an example of how, how we could go about it. So this example is an electron is located 5 millimeters from a point charge Y of charge 5.0 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. And you're being asked to find the direction of the electron, the electrical field strength of the point charge Y at 5 millimetres, the electrical force between the electron and Y, and the acceleration of the electron. So when we think about the direction of the electron, well, here we have a positive and negative charge. Therefore, it's going to be attracted. So our answer to A is that um, you know, the direction of the electron, electron moves towards Y, because it's going to be attracted. When we think about the electrical field strength, I'm going to apply this formula. Now, this Q, I have two options here. I can either use QE or I can use the uh, charge of Y. 
Now, this is based, uh, similar to when we use with gravity, it's based on the larger charge or the charge of the field that we're looking around, okay? So we're asking what is the field coming out of Q and what is the field at five millimeters? So what, what's the strength of the field at five millimeters in this location? But we're gonna use this. So we're gonna use 5.0 times 10 to the negative eight all on the radius, which is five millimeters. Now I would suggest that you write that in scientific notation, all squared. And we get a value of a large value here. Newtons per coulomb. It's quite large value. Um, don't be worried, it's just the field strength. Um, you gotta remember that this electron is carrying a very small charge. See, now we've been asked to find the force, okay, between the two particles. And we could use F equals Q E, or alternatively, we could use the long form K Q1 Q2, all on R squared. Provided I've already found E, so this is E here, I'm just going to use that substitute. I'm going to say F equals Q, the charge of the electron. I'm not going to worry about dealing with the negatives because I'm not having a negative force. I'm going to be talking in positives. Okay, 17, 9, 80. And F equals 2.8 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons. Quite a small force when we consider what, what we would experience with gravity. Then the next part is to ascertain our acceleration. And here I'm just going to use F equals MA. I have my force. I have my mass of my electron. So just bring it down. This is the mass of my electron. Mass of my electron was 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 on A. I would resolve for A, and I get A equal 3.2 times 10 to the negative 18 meters per second squared. Now, don't be confused by this, okay? Don't be confused. This is an acceleration. This is not a velocity. So if some of you were thinking, oh, well, that can't happen because it's faster than the speed of light, I applaud you for thinking that because you're, you're thinking correctly in terms of physics term, but this is an acceleration. Therefore, we can have an acceleration of this level. Doesn't mean that the particle is moving at the speed of light. It is just accelerating very fast for a very short period. Okay, thank you. I hope the lesson is helpful.